Hi, it's Dougie Wood, and in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to build a clocking in and clocking out system using SharePoint Online and Power Automate. The end result will be a mobile application that your staff can use when they get to a certain location. Uh, they can have two buttons to clock into location and to clock out of the location. And then we're going to store all of the key information, the dates, times, and geolocation of where they were when they use those buttons. So to explain why you might want to build this system, um, I'm just going to roll the, the clock back a little bit to when um, I was building out a very similar solution for a client in the past couple of years who were a healthcare provider and they were sending out um, care workers to people's homes, service users' homes, and they wanted to make sure that not only from a contractual perspective that the, the service uh, users were getting the, the correct amount of time from the caregivers, um, so they were actually turning up at the home and spending, say, an hour with them, um, but also it was a safeguarding exercise for the employees to make sure that if they do, say, check into a service user's home that actually after an hour that they've actually left as well um, and if say for example it's been more than an hour and a half and they've not checked out then we can escalate that we can um, send a notification urgent messages to the line managers to let them know that somebody maybe hasn't uh, checked out of a specific location so let's dive in and start taking a look at actually how we build out this solution so the solution heavily relies on um, Power Automate. It's a 90% Power Automate solution. The interface is going to be the mobile, um, the Power Automate mobile application, which is free uh, to install. Um, as long as you've got a Microsoft 365 license, you'll be able to log into it. Um, and um, I've just done a little screen recording here to show what it looks like on the mobile phone. So you'd have a mobile app which would look a little bit like this. Uh, obviously, you'd have your Microsoft 365 profile picture to show it was you. And then you can see all of these kind of what we call um, instant flow buttons that when you click them can automatically run a workflow. In this case, when we click on the clock in, it's going to um, put a record into a SharePoint list that we've clocked in. And then when we click on clock out it will then put another record into a list to say that we've clocked out from a certain location so that's what it looks like so power automate is actually the user interface um, you could go and create say a power app specifically for this but i'm just trying to show you the the quickest easiest way that you could get this solution off the ground as a proof of concept so Power Automate is our user interface. It's what we're using to actually um, start the workflow process off. Um, then we're going to use a SharePoint list, um, and we're going to store the data um, that the app is actually capturing into a list, which we can then use. Again, we could look at creating further workflows to um, escalate things if people haven't checked out within a certain period of time or something like that. But again, this is just a proof of concept just to show you um, technically what we can do. So the starting point is we need to go to uh, Power Automate. So if you're not familiar with Power Automate, um, how we get there is just go to office.com. Um, you can search for Power Automate and that's then going to launch and open up the Power Automate um, uh, editing uh, center. So from within here, we would click on the create button and that's going to take us to an area that we can create our workflows. So if I click on um, I want an instant cloud flow. So there's all sorts of different types of triggers with workflows. You've got uh, automated cloud flows. If you wanted, um, say, for example, if we were to build another workflow, which we're not going to do today, but if we were to build something which was, say, checking every half an hour to see if people have clocked out of certain locations, you'd want an automated cloud flow to do that because it's being triggered on a certain period of time. Um, um, sorry, that's, <laughs> I should say, the scheduled uh, flow should be doing something like that. Um, automated uh, cloud flows are triggered by uh, destination events so that's something like if a file was created or something like that um, but the scheduled flow would be um, if you wanted um, it to be kicking off say, every 30 minutes every 60 minutes every day every week every month or whatever it was um, but actually what we're interested in is the instant cloud flow because we're triggering this manually as needed now the other thing to mention about this is yes you can run these from mobile phones but you can also run it from your desktop from power automate on a browser on your desktop laptop tablet or, or anything else as well so you don't have to just use them um, as kind of mobile uh, phone buttons so i click on instant cloud flow and i'm going to select my triggers manually trigger a flow so then click on create there we go so 
my trigger is literally just a manually trigger a flow. You can, I'm not going to go too much into it today, but you can add other inputs at the point in time. So if you wanted a bit of text or um, a file or an email or, or a number or date field to be populated, um, you can actually get that populated at the time that they're clicking on that button. So just to give an example, um, like in this scenario, the proof of concept, it might be that the caregiver um, wants to put down some notes about the service user um, as they're leaving. So as they're checking out, we might want to capture a bit of text to sort of say, um, what happened? What did you do? So gave them some food, um, put the TV on for them, uh, sat with them and talked for half an hour, washed the pots, whatever it was, they can put down the sort of notes about what they did at that point in time. And that would automatically be stored um, alongside everything that we're doing as part of this list as well. Um, so the next thing then is, um, it's fairly simplistic workflow this. Um, because we've got our trigger, the only other thing that we need to do is we then need to create an item inside of a SharePoint list. Now, um, it's a little bit kind of back to front in terms of the way that I would um, typically do a workflow um, that you would typically build out your list um, and then you'd come into the workflow and then you would say create an item in this list. I'm going to do this slightly differently as part of today's tutorial because I want to show you all of the values that you could possibly include inside of your SharePoint list that you could store as part of this trigger because there's a lot more in there than a lot of people realize. So the next step I'm going to say is I'm going to create a SharePoint list. So um, I'm going to type in, oh, come on, fingers. Um, so I can type in SharePoint and on my SharePoint connector, underneath here, these are all the different actions that you can do with SharePoint. So you can create files or create folders or um, all sorts of different bits and bobs. But what I'm looking for is I want to create an item. I probably already skipped past this. So I'm going to search this down again and i'm going to say create item so i'm going to create an item in a list now i've not yet created that list and we are going to go and create that list in a second but first um i'm just going to select um on i'm going to store it on my hub site just because it's a demo um and list just say my example list for now which doesn't have any fields really in it the reason why i'm doing this i want to click into this field and show you these are all the possible things that you could you could capture from this connector. So if you're not overly familiar with Power Automate, um, the way it kind of works is that each of these kind of um, uh, actions when you're sort of triggering something um, or if you're doing something, getting information from somewhere, it will come with a load of properties. So these properties are from the, the point of manually triggering. So just from someone clicking a button, these are all the things that we've captured at this point in time. So we've got the username. We know the username of the person that's clicked the button. We've got the user's email address. We know the email address of the person that's clicked this button. We know the date and the time that it was clicked. We've also got, now this is where it gets really interesting. We've got the full address. So this is the geolocation address of the person that, that's actually clicked that button. Um, we've also got the country region the city, the state, the street, the postal code, the latitude, and the longitude. Now, um, obviously, today's proof of concept, um, I'm not actually going to sh reveal my, my uh, exact address because it's so accurate. It's literally within like something like four by four meters or something like that. You can see exactly where it is. So you would be able to spot my office bedroom a mile off. <laughs> um, so... Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to replicate them. And again, I'm not going to create all of these fields because you won't necessarily need all of these fields in your real one. But these are all the different fields that you could um, possibly uh, find as well. So um, let's quickly jump into SharePoint. So now if I go to office.com again, and I'm actually going to create my list on my the hub site. So I'm just going to look for the hub. And this is going to open up my SharePoint site. Now, if you don't have a SharePoint site that's already created, um, I suggest you go and find one of my other videos about how to create SharePoint sites, how to create hub sites, things like that, um, and create your SharePoint site first. You could also use, there's, there's another app inside of office.com, which is called Lists, which is basically just another front end for SharePoint lists. So you could go in and create your list inside of here if you wanted to as well. Um, they both end up in the same place. Um, so, um, don't get too worried about the, this particular step. You can either do it through the list interface or you could do it for the SharePoint interface. Just for time's sake, I'm just going to go into a SharePoint that I've already got created. I'm going to go to Site Contents. I'm going to click on New and then List. And then this is going to be um, my clocking in system. So I'm going to call this uh, Blank List and I'm going to call this my 
a clocking in and out system. Um, then I click on create. Now I'm now going to create all the fields um, which are required that I want to store. So uh, for example, um, I want to know the, the name of the person. So I'm going to say the name of the person that's clocking in. I want to have the Let's just go back because I must have been, even I've forgotten what these fields are. Um, I might want to have the uh, the date. I wouldn't worry too much about because in SharePoint you do have the created field. So when an item's created, um, you would automatically get that. Um, same with the timestamp that comes to the date and time. Um, but I might want to have say the full address, um, the uh, street and postal code, for example. If you want to be really specific, you could use latitude and longitude. Now these are more useful. Say for example, again, um, I've worked with a very similar solution for a security company, um, which wanted to make sure that uh, that they have security guards which work on things like airports or massive factories, huge factories. And again, from a contractual point of view, they have to evidence that the security guards um, every hour are going around and checking certain locations. And there's a couple of ways you could do that. You could do, use an app like this where you're then logging the, the longitude and the latitude so you know exactly within a four meter radius where they were. So they actually went and checked each of the different hangars um, or, or, or factory um, buildings within a certain um, certain space. Um, then uh, another option is you. Some people choose to have like barcodes, so you could use with Power Apps. You could have a barcode scanner. So obviously, then they're scanning the barcodes. But the problem with something like that is um, it doesn't take a genius to take a photograph of the barcode, print it off, stick it in the in the security office, and then they just scan that barcode uh, multiple times. So it doesn't take a genius to work that out. Whereas with this app, um, you actually know specifically the the longitude latitude of exactly where they were when they click that button so it's very hard to cheat that you have to be a bit more clever to, to be able to cheat that system so um, what I'm going to, then going to do is go back into my list in here and then I'm going to uh, add in um, let's say uh, we'll have the street and the postal code um, so we'll have street as a text field and we'll have postcode as a text field. Cool. So that's all we now need to do. So this is the data that we're going to store. Um, I'm now going to go back into my Power Automate workflow, and then I'm going to go on to um, oh, big thing that I've kind of forgotten here. Um, I'm going to add a choice field for whether this is a clocking in or clocking out. So so this is clocking. Uh, so in, we'll call it in or out. Um, so say so it's in or out. Um, and then click on save. Uh, again, this is just a proof of concept. Um, uh, so we're just keeping it nice and simple. Um, so we go back into here. Now we're going to change the name of this list. Um, it might require actually for me to, because I've done... Because I've created this item, it's going to complain a little bit. I might need to save it and refresh it for that list to show up. So I'm going to save it. I need to give it a name. So this is going to be my, my say, clock in workflow. So I'll save that. Um, I'll come out of my workflow area. Click on edit again. So this now should refresh all the data sources. So hopefully now on here, we should now have clocking in and clocking out system. And then it's then going to show me the fields I've then got I can populate. So because this is my clocking in, I'm going to select from the drop down here that it's going to be clocking in. And the postcode will be um, ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -ba, the field postcode. The street will be street. Um, and the name will be the username, like this. Um, so that's it. So that's now my clocking in workflow. So if I click on save, I've now got my clocking in workflow. And now to speed up the process, I'm going to go back and now I'm going to click my clocking in, uh, sorry, my clocking out workflow. And that's really easy to do now. So all I need to do is click on save as. We'll change this now 
to say clock out. Click on save. And then go back into my flows, go to clock out. Now we need to make sure that we turn this on. Sometimes when you save as a workflow, uh, people get caught out because you actually need to remember to turn it back on again. But this time, the only thing that we need to change is we go back into our editing area in here. And under create item, we just change this to clock out. I don't know why the title is set to 11. I, don't know, I think I'll just put that in. So I'll say, call this clock out. Oh, don't know what is going on my fingers today. I cannot spell. Uh, clock out. There we go. Save that. So that just means in the title field, it'll show it as a, as a clock out. And in the in out field, it'll show that it's out. So that's it. So now I've got my workflows created. All I now need to do is go and run that workflow. So in true Blue Peter style, here's one that I created earlier. Um, so you'll see that on my mobile phone, I'll open this up. I'll click on the check-in. It'll ask me to run the flow. I run that and it says flow run successfully. And then if I go back into my list, there we go. There's a record now that's been created. Um, you can see uh, the title field I put in check-in, um, the name, so my, my name's there, the street, the postal code, in or out. Now, this was really accurate. Um, actually, the street, uh, address from this obviously I've, I've removed this but take my word for it um, the the street address it actually had was my next door neighbor um, so it was um, I'm number five it had number six uh, on there but it had the postal code perfectly correct um, but if I wanted to as I say if I wanted to bring that in even closer rather than just the street uh, a number uh, I could have the longitude latitude and that is really really accurate um, so it's even closer so all that details is really easy to capture I hope you found that video useful. Um, if you did, please do subscribe to the channel, like this video and drop me a comment below. Uh, let me know how you get on, if you if you plan on using this, what you plan on using it for. Um, this, this is the sort of workflow which um, you can really run with. You can add all sorts of stuff to afterwards. And there's loads of cool uh, reasons why it, it could be used. Um, and because this is something which um, doesn't require kind of premium features. It's just SharePoint Online, Power Automate, native stuff out of the box with most licenses. Um, it's something that, that's cheap um, and easy to use uh, and easy to set up. Um, so let me know how you get on. Uh, if you've got any questions at all, use the comments feed below uh, and stay tuned for more SharePoint and Power Automate videos.